Today, on today's episode, we have someone very special. I find her super cool. She is so lovely, and she does some healing at another level. So today, the topic will be about aligning with our inner core. So my special guest today is Pia. Hi, Pia. Thank you so much for joining our stage today. Hello, everybody. I also might just start just by taking off my blue blocking glasses, just so you can <laughs> see my eyes. I know that that can make a really big difference with connection. However, I will be wearing them for the entire rest of the presentation. And by the time I finish this presentation, I think you'll understand why. And so I really love the topic of this conversation, knowledge is power. And I truly believe that knowledge about our body and how our body responds to different cues is where we are most empowered. And so I hope to literally unveil and illuminate a whole lot of things about light that potentially you have never thought about, never known about, and that's going to make a huge difference to not just your health, but your ability to maintain and forge and sustain and amplify relationships. And I'm sure that we all know that relationships is the bedrock of life, the relationship mm -hmm. obviously with ourselves, but the relationship we can have with any other being, whether that is a human or an animal or a plant or whatever we might choose to be in relationship with. And so to live our best lives, we've got to have energy. And this conversation is all about how you can gather more energy in your body and not fritter it away. So without further ado, let me share my screen. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's do a little introduction about you, who you are and things like that. <laughs> oh, shit. Sure, sure. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So my name is Pia. I live in Melbourne. I'm 46. I've been in the wellness industries now since I was 16. So that is 30 years this year. Um, I have studied across many, many different disciplines. I literally, actually, I'm such a student of life. I never actually stop studying. So I just, um, you know, find different threads of information keep leading me deeper and deeper and deeper into what I consider to be root cause, like what is creating dysregulation or disharmony in a system. Um, and I really focus on ecosystem wellness, I guess. So looking at our human body as an ecosystem, but every little part of us is its own little ecosystem. And then you can look at the bigger community aspect and the country aspect and the globe aspect. So I like to zoom in. And I like to zoom out. And when I do that, I call upon the knowledge that I hold across physiological realms, like body-based realms, as well as psychological, like how we're thinking and how that translates through our body. So there's not many topics related to health and well-being that I can't speak fluently on because of the amount of study and embodiment work that I've done. This is literally my whole life, my passion, um, and I and I deeply love sharing it. So I have been a skin therapist. I've done dermal therapies, body work, massage work, uh, Reiki, NLP. I've studied to be a naturopath. I've done lots of trauma-informed studies, somatic psychotherapy, functional nutrition, uh, breath work, um, yoga, you know, like it, that's not even all of it. So I, I am across most things. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a little bit about me in a nutshell. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions, Martha, before we start? Does that feel like it was? I think that is really good because it's always, always nice to know who you are and then people can actually align with us with what we're saying. Absolutely mm -hmm. love what you do. When we first connect, I can already see your energy difference. So I love having you in our space and thank you for giving us this time into joining us as well. So Without further ado, I will give you the space and I'll be in the background. Anyone, if you're watching this, if you have any question, feel free to put it into the chat box. I'll be monitoring it. And thank you for our audience that are joining us live here as well. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I'd love to share my screen. And I also do absolutely want to begin um, as we kind of settle in just with all of us noticing our body. And I can see that there are some people on live and um, I know that Nadia, you're jumping in a car and doing up your seatbelt, which is awesome. And at the same time, I just want to invite in just a little more awareness of your own body. And so that could just be feeling your feet on the floor, noticing the position of your spine, your jaw, your tongue, and maybe just noticing one breath in and doubling the length of your exhale out. 
it's just a beautiful thing to come into some level of alignment just before we dive into learning something new and different. So that's a nice way to set up. So I'm going to share my screen um, and I definitely do invite questions as we go. And if anything doesn't make sense, I'm going to do my best to create an introduction to everybody to something that can get you know, pretty deep. Um, but this, I think, will illuminate your understanding of what's actually changing your bodies in ways that you just didn't know about before. And I used to be, you know, a chronic insomniac. I used to have lots of different addiction issues. I have lived, you know, multitudes of different pathways in my life. And that's part of what catapulted me into all of these different levels of learning. And so I am aware upon reflection of how much light was changing my ability to interact with the world in the ways that I truly wanted. And if you think about the ways that you truly want to interact with the world, like I love the beach, which is why I chose this particular um, photo. I just is quite meaningful to me. Like this is me living my best life, basically. If we want to live our best lives, we have to know what we can rely on. Do you agree? Like I, I need to know that I can rely on the trust that I have in my body um, I need to know that I have cultivated resilience and I like to rely on the fact that I trust in flow and that I can surrender and go along with the challenges that life constantly presents. And we also have to interact with like the bigger portions of our life. So it's not just the inner trust that we have in our body, but it's also the rest of our ecosystem, as I just mentioned before, like how that zooms out into earth and our communities in harmonious ways like would you agree with that like if you're going to live your best life you want to be able to rely on some of these pieces and so the info that I'm going to present and the different ways in which you get to rely on yourself a little bit more is not just applicable to you and your body it's going to be applicable to your family to your kids even to your pets also to plants like literally this conversation is an ecosystem wellness alignment and so when it comes to things that we can rely on, <laughs> I think that there's one thing that we know that we can rely on each and every day that's definitely going to happen. Um, hopefully my video will play. And that is that the sun is going to come up every single morning. Like we know that that is going to happen. If we're alive and we're on earth, we know that the sun's going to come up every morning. We're not just going to get sunrise. We're also going to get solar noon. We're also going to get sunset. Obviously, we need to have other things to enjoy that, like we need our breath and oxygen in our body. But we know we can rely on the sun coming up and that it's very consistent. It might change from season to season, but that is a given every single day. And that's important because as Earth evolved, like I'm talking over the last 4 billion years, the sun, the light and darkness cycles of each day well, what set up evolution? And you might be thinking, well, what on earth has that got to do with me, this 4 billion you know, light story, 4 billion year old light story? Well, it's got everything to do with you because your body has evolved over hundreds and thousands of years. The, our human body has evolved to interact with the light in very specific ways. And it's got lots and lots of amazing ways in which it interacts with light. And science is starting to unravel more and more and more about these ways and they're starting to understand how imperative it is for health if you want to choose the health journey that you interact with light more consciously so the fact that our body has evolved with the sun is what i really really want to land here like we need the sun every part of earth needs the sun it also needs the darkness so without those two signals and without those two things arriving each and every day, there are different things that can happen in our world. And what else do you reckon that the sun or the, you know, the light or the darkness brings us? Like what is it that you can think of that's important in your life that happens because the sun rises every day? Well, for most people, it's that they can tell the time, yeah? <laughs> Being able to tell the time, is a pretty important thing if you want to get stuff done in your life. And so how do you know what time it is? Most people know what time it is because they look at their phone. 
Like that's, you know, if I asked you what time it is, probably you'd look at your phone and you'd be like, oh yeah, right now, I think it's, what is it? 9.46 a.m. in the morning um, in Melbourne where I'm presenting right now. And so we've adjusted in these kind of evolved modern lifestyle times to only be accessing devices that have an artificial light source coming from them to tell the time. But do you know how our body tells the time? It does tell the time from artificial light sources as well. It can be confusing for our body, but our body knows how to tell the time from the cues of light that are happening from dawn to dusk and then all the way through the night. And that's how our human body has evolved. And that's a really important thing to remember. Our human body hasn't changed much over the last hundred years since the introduction of electricity. Like we have not got some crazily weird new adaptation to be able to handle artificial light sources the way that we're exposed to them now. And so light is literally the most important time giving cue for our body to tell the time. And so again, I've got another question for you. What happens when you're not on time? Like, how do you feel? Who does it impact? Like what happens in your body when you're not running to time? And so I've got these four little videos up here. I don't know why they're not all auto playing, but I'm just going to press the button so that they play because each one of these, I was like, oh yeah, I felt every single one of these videos where I've been rushing, where I felt like things weren't working out. It's really felt chaotic. It's basically Chaos is another word for inflammation and inflammation is another word for like inside fires inside of my body. So I've got inside fires in my mind or inside fires in my mouth. I'm trying to, you know, talk too fast or walk too fast or eat too fast or that sense of rush is hard to navigate. Yeah. For energy, any, any of us that have ever felt the pressure of time that we don't have enough time, we can't get it all done. It's impossible right now. It feels kind of overwhelming and crushing after a little while. Yeah. And it's not just your body that feels that tension, but your breath, you know, your, the way that you breathe changes, the way that you interact with others changes. And so there are a lot of different impacts that are happening through our whole mind body system when our sense of time is dysregulated. Does that make sense? And the other thing I wanted to say about rushing is that <laughs> you're not really going to invite in rest or relaxation, yeah? If you've got a time scarcity thing going on, the hardest thing to do is to stop. Have you ever noticed that? You don't want to stop. It, it feels unsafe basically to stop, to rest, to relax, to nourish. And so how many women you know, can put their hands up and say, yeah, I'm definitely one of those women who knows that I'm giving from an empty cup and I do struggle to fully rest and relax. I even struggle to sleep. Like they're all signs that there's some dysregulated clocks, times, like scarcity running in your body. Yeah. And so what I want to bring to your awareness is that there's something like we have an internal clock inside of our system and we're set up this internal clock over the course of evolution to work with the natural light. So cues of light and darkness coming from the sun and the moon and the stars set up what's called a circadian rhythm. Circadia or um, circa is a Latin term for about and dia is day. So about a day. It's not exactly 24 hours, but it's very, very close to. I've got this little picture on the screen. I know you might not necessarily be able to see it, Nadia, but I'll just briefly tell you that at different time points throughout the entire 24-hour-ish cycle, our body is doing different things. It's sending out different hormonal secretions. It's changing neurotransmitter production. It's changing enzymes. It's changing DNA repair programs. Like all of our different cells, tissues, and organ systems will be doing different things at different times. And it makes sense because you're not the same woman at 8 a.m. that you are at 8 p.m., yeah, or 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You feel freaking different. You're not just laughing. Thanks, babe. I agree. <laughs> and I'm much more lively in the morning than I am at night. Um, and, and I did used to be a chronic insomniac. I just want to remind everyone, I used to sleep for maybe 25 hours a week. So I used to not rest at all. So I deeply, deeply understand how dysregulated that kind of storyline um, works. And also even the opposite end of the spectrum, I've completely burnt out before where I couldn't even get out of bed. And it wasn't that I was resting. I just had zero energy, like I couldn't move. And so again, my cells, tissues and organ systems in either side of that spectrum 
They weren't doing normal things. That wasn't their optimal, that wasn't their optimal output. They were really, you know, chaotic in either end of that spectrum. And so to find harmony, it makes sense then that we want to start recognizing that we've got an inner clock that works with the clock time of natural um, light and darkness. And if we can align more with those rhythms, the rhythms in our body can start finding their harmony. So I also want to mention here a lot of people uh, these days, I feel like circadian rhythms is a little bit more um, available to the public awareness. It never used to be, but I feel like a lot of people might have heard that term at least now. And maybe they just think it's related to sleep and wake cycles. It is literally way more than that. So basically when you're asleep, you run all of these different programs of repair and immune function and a whole lot of other things. And then when you're awake, you need cognitive function and you need to be able to access your sense of social engagement and you want to get stuff done. And so it's literally related to every aspect of that that helps us lie down and rest and stand up and do. <laughs> so light is one of the most powerful environmental regulators of our behavior, of our mood, of how we interact with ourselves and others. And if you miss the light cue, it wouldn't matter what diet you introduce, the exercise you do, the affirmations that you do, the supplements that you take, you're just not going to quite get there. And that was also my story for a long time, even when I studied to be a naturopath. Um, yeah, I didn't know about the light story at that stage and I was missing a big, big piece of the puzzle. And same when I was a yoga practitioner or a breathwork instructor or, you know, any of the other things that I've activated and a skin therapist. And so also just think about getting older. Like we're all getting older every single second, yeah? <laughs> so <laughs> and it's a great thing to appreciate, but it's also great to appreciate that our cells are also getting older. Like they start changing and they don't necessarily have the same access to the same nutrients and resources that they did when we were a baby or a teenager or a young adult. And so as we age, our circadian rhythm can become less robust. And why I care about introducing this to you is no matter what age you're at now, you can improve your circadian rhythms. And so as you get older, you will have the best opportunity to work with your body as possible. It's never too late. And whatever, you know, damage in inverted commas might have happened or, you know, unawareness might have been part of your life story. There are definitely amazing ways in which you can readdress your health, your well-being, and shift your circadian rhythms. And it's important, this circadian rhythm conversation, particularly for women, because we do go through menopause. And so our hormonal fluctuations are quite intense. And for women that don't have a very good circadian rhythm, it will be more intense. That's just going to be how it goes. Women are at a higher risk of developing depression, stress, anxiety, and emotional distress um, you know, at this transitional time. I've certainly read plenty of posts in the, um, yeah, the girls about this exact thing with women saying, oh, what supplement should I take? And, you know, I'm not feeling very good in my body. Again, I just want to reiterate that if you don't get the light cues right, it'll become very challenging for your body um, to continue to address it through something external to itself, through a supplement or through food choices or whatever. I hope that makes sense. So every single factor that's listed on this slide, like the, you know, mental health status, but also the things that are associated with menopausal transition, like skin aging and bone health, they are also all related to circadian rhythms. So from your bones all the way out to your skin and anything in between has a circadian rhythm directly or indirectly influenced by light. So it this is a massive, massive health story. I hope that you can appreciate this. And so I want to just talk about a couple of the, the things that we're going to cover. That was like my little intro. <laughs> Maybe we can all just take a breath and, and also just notice what's even different with that introduction, as brief as it was. And just noticing what you know to be true about your body and your current life. And so what I'd love to bring in next is like what makes an illuminated woman leader. And I like the word illuminated because it kind of means lit up to me. And when I meet another person that is lit up, I mean, they're magnetizing. Like I know that they're living in their authentic truth and that they're expressive and I can feel their integrity and their ethics and their connection to something greater than themselves. And it inspires me. And that's what I hope for all of us. I hope all of us can feel that level of 
authentic connection to self and that we're really connected to our own light in whatever unique way that wants to shine. And so I also want to discuss how our body knows the time, because when you know that, it'll make it easier for you to help your body. (laughs) I also want to talk about what is light. Like, what is light? (laughs) It's a nice thing to know about. And what are the impacts of light? What are the things that emit light? And how to activate your best light routine? And again, I just want to say that these are kind of introductions. I could literally talk about all of these things for hours. (laughs) I would love to, but you might not have time for that. (laughs) Um, So let's just land here for a second. What do you need to activate, amplify and embody your own leadership? You know, you don't have to speak to other people. You don't have to be doing what I'm doing right now, but your own life led leadership in your own family unit, friend unit, pet unit, house unit, (laughs) whatever it is, how you want to lead yourself through your life. I certainly know that for me, when I wake up in the morning, I want to feel alert. I want to feel like I've got some brain power. I want to feel like I've got learning ability, memory retention. I want to feel like I'm in flow, present, in sync. I want to be able to tap into my why and my values and and believe that I can live my dreams. So I need energy for those things. You might have some other things that are really relevant for you, but at the end of the day, each One of us requires energy for us to activate, amplify, and embody our leadership in whatever way is meaningful for us. And this light story is what gives you back your energy. And so what happens when we don't have energy, when we're out of sync, out of time, and basically we're not able to be present? All of these things, skin issues, slow healing, no energy motivation, poor exercise recovery, fatigue, chronic stress, pain issues, hormonal issues, brain fog issues, digestive issues, you know, I'm going to call them in inverted comments, bad habits, like self-sabotaging behaviors, immunity problems, weight issues, low confidence, lack of routine, eye issues, sleep problems, sex, fertility, libido issues, obstructive sleep apnea, and other respiratory issues. Underneath all of this is light cues, definitely directing part of why they're, they're out of sync, out of time, but we don't have energy to be our best selves. And it's challenging to build capacity again. I get it. And that's why I've got these simple strategies to at least start initiating to help you gather some energy so you can increase your capacity for healing so that you can keep increasing your capacity to be more of yourself. So what else did I want to say here? I'm just taking a moment also to look at what's underneath all of this. I kind of also, I guess the last thing that I want to think about is the contrast between light and dark. You know, when we're in our leadership, we always feel like we're in the light. And this slide here is, you know, often associated with denser, darker kind of feeling things. I also just want to acknowledge that the contrast of life is what helps us grow. And so that there's nothing wrong or right or necessarily positive or negative about any of these aspects. It's just a recognition that you can accept where you are and that you still might have it, accept also that you have a desire for change. And so acceptance is always the first step. Like I acknowledge where I'm at. I accept where I'm at. I allow where I'm at. And I also allow more space for me to create a change. And so when it comes to creating a change, it's obviously not one part of our body. In my perspective, all parts of our body are deeply, deeply interconnected and communicating the whole time from skin to within. Like looking after just one part of our body is helpful. And there are a number of different things to address. What I love about light cues is that they address all of it all at once, which makes things much, much easier. And so I'm talking like literally every single one of our 11 anatomically defined um, parts of our body that you might know about, like our nervous system and reproductive system, digestive system, excretory system, muscular system, in, again, in my practitioner lens point of view, I also include our microbiome system. I include something called our mitochondrial system, which is like an inner part of your cell that helps you produce energy and different signals that communicate throughout your entire body. I also include our fascial system as part of our care. You might have heard of myofascia before, um, but fascia basically is the integrative part of our entire system that holds us all together. So I like to specifically take care of the fascial system when I'm working with people too. I also like to talk about structured water. The water in our body takes different forms. That's really important. Light can really help that. 
Light helps our fascia, light helps our mitochondria, light helps our microbiomes, and it certainly helps our energy and our frequency. And just think about any time that you might have been at the beach or in a forest or just spending more time outside in nature. Did you feel better as a result? Did you feel happier? Did you feel more connected to yourself? The longer time that you spent in nature, did that continue to grow? And I, you, I've actually not yet met a person that hasn't said yes to that. And so earth is incredibly healing for us. We all kind of know it, but then we forget some of the reasons why. And I want to broach some of these reasons why with you today. So when we view light, obviously we know light comes through our eyes and I'll talk about our eyes first, but there's other places that light interacts with our body all the time. But when light enters through our eyes, it goes through a special specialized tract, like a, a pathway straight into this little section of our brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. You don't need to remember that name. It's called the SCN. I actually just call it the master clock. And basically I like to think of it like you've got a grand central clock in your brain that sets up all of the different clocks through the rest of your body. It's kind of like here's the station master and you've got all of these different platforms running trains of information, you know, through your liver and your kidneys and your reproductive organs and your digestive system and your immune system. And they're all running to time off this master clock in your brain. So that's how important light signaling is coming through your eyes. It literally sets up the master clock in your brain that sets up all the other clocks through the rest of your system. I hope that this is making sense for you. So this internal clock is what governs our daily patterns of behavior, of our physiology, of our psychology. And this is like the orchestra conductor and everything else is playing to the beat of what's going on in our brain through the light signals coming through our eyes, also through our skin. So our eyes and our skin are organs that literally specially evolved to capture photons of light. And what is light? Light is energy. Light is information. Literally like one little photon of light has just so you know been traveling through the entire universe and i know you think it comes directly from the sun it takes eight minutes around about to travel from the sun to us but also photons of light can move you know beyond and around and through through that like light and energy never dies it's just constantly transforming so there's a lot of information in light and our eyes are using visible light to create visuals there are special parts of our eyes that do that rods and cones but there's also parts of our eyes that are taking in ambient light, environmental light cues. So it doesn't necessarily have to be direct light. It's just the light kind of in the atmosphere around us as well. That's also true for our skin. And I don't know if you know this, but your eyes are part of your brain. And our skin actually evolved in when we were little embryos sitting in our mother's room, womb. Our brain and our skin divided from the same cell lineage. I, as a skin therapist and as a naturopath and all the other things that I do, I view our skin kind of like our, you know, you could call it our third brain. You know, we've got our head brain, our gut brain is called our second brain. Our skin is like another brain. It's constantly taking in information. It has its own um, hormonal axes. It's got its own stress axes. Like it makes lots of decisions on its own. And our skin is basically covered in little eyes, these little things called opsins that can see light. They're most interested in blue light, most of them. And so I'm going to talk about blue light a little bit soon. But I also, for anyone that's interested in having good, healthy, radiant skin, again, I've, I, you know, I've, I've been a skin therapist for nearly 30 years. I've not yet met a woman that doesn't like feeling more confident in her skin. Circadian rhythms and light cues have everything to do with skin health as well and it's part of how I optimize women to feel more confident in their skin we also know I'm sure that you are aware that we've got melanin in our hair whether you dye your hair or not like I dye my hair but we have melanin a little special pigment that interacts not just with light but the entire electromagnetic frequency spectrum we've got melanin in our, you know our hair in our eyes it's what gives its color skin it gives its color but I don't know if you know this we also have melanin inside of our ears inside of our brain, inside of our mouth, inside of our heart, inside of our gut. Like we've got melanin and melanocytes, the, the cells that produce melanin. In all of these places deep inside of our body, 
where you wouldn't think that light is going to. And so the fact that they're there means that light is going there. Light travels through our system. So that's why you want to make sure it's the right kind of light most often to help your body activate its best processes because it has all of these different ways to receive light information and it preferentially loves natural light because that's what it's evolved to over 4 billion years. The other part about our body, these special um, uh, parts of us, these little proteins that can also receive light are called opsins. There's a particular opsin called melanopsin. Again, I'm not going to bore you, bore you with all the science behind it, but this is a particularly blue light receiving protein in our skin, in our eyes, and in different parts of our body that activates different cell communication with blue light. And this is where the artificial light conversation becomes very, very, very important. But I do just also want to point out that even though you might not think that it's light, everything uh, on the electromagnetic frequency spectrum is light in some ways. It's just that some light is visible to us in our human eyes and some light is not visible to us. Like we can't see, um, you know, extremely low frequency electromagnetic frequency, but they're all kind of different types of light. That melanin pigment that I spoke about before that's in your eyes and your hair and on your skin and in your brain and your ears and mouth and all different parts of you, melanin interacts with the entire electromagnetic frequency, whether we can see it, hear it, feel it or not. If it's around us, melanin is interacting with it. And although I'm not going to talk about it so much today, I feel like that's a really big deal when you think about how many man-made devices, human-made devices, are sending electromagnetic frequency signals, like the laptop I'm on right now, the Wi-Fi that's on in my house right now, the phone that might be you might have on right now. And it's just another aspect to kind of think about because I like to make sure that I turn off as many things as possible, as often as possible around me if I have control over that. And that's just another way that I can help the light signals in my body settle down if you have a lot of devices on you, on, you know, on your body, literally, if you're wearing them or around you a lot of the time, just means your body's not getting a rest from what you could call a light signal. I know it doesn't look like a light signal, but because it's part of the electromagnetic frequency spectrum, it is a signal that your body's responding to. I hope that that makes sense. So basically the duration of electromagnetic frequency, like the timing of it, the intensity of it, the distance that it is from our body or in our body or around our body is a big deal. And, you know, we are electromagnetic. That means that we've got electricity in our body. We've got magnetism in our body. We are interacting as an electromagnetic being all the time. So it's important just to know that man-made devices are definitely interacting with our body in ways that you might not have been aware of up until now. And I'll just park that conversation there because it's another big one. But it's just nice to know about that. If you can take control of the man-made devices around you, take control of them. If you don't need them, turn them off, <laughs> unplug them. The other greatest electromagnetic frequency emitter that we have is Earth. And so the more direct contact that we have with Earth, the more our body actually receives. And that's not woo-woo. That's very scientifically validated. We literally get a big exchange of information that helps change the electrical fields of our body, reduces inflammation, reduces pain, increases healing, increases mental capacity. You know, all of these different amazing things can happen the longer time that we spend in contact with Earth. You know, any time that you can get is great, even if you're just touching a tree or even if you're touching a pet that's on the ground. But if you can be bare skin on the ground, you know, with as much skin on the ground as possible, it's even better. If you're in the beach or in a water body, it becomes even more powerful for our system. And the general length of time for what they call a therapeutic dose is about 30 minutes. So you don't have to hit that every day, but if you did, it would be really, really helpful. And I just wanted to add that in here too. So now let's talk about just the actual light spectrum, the visible light spectrum that we can see, because this is really important. So we've got this visible light spectrum, which kind of goes from violet all the way up to red. So that's that's the colors that that we see, you know, with the you know trees and plants around us, um, you know, with the objects in the room, like that's visible light. But the sun is also emitting light that we can't see. So some of that's UV. UV's got a really bad rap. Everyone's like, oh, UV causes cancer. Yes, I get that it does, but it's usually our 
um, the ways that we're interacting with light and other factors that go into creating cancer. So we actually need UV light for the health of our body. So UVB helps us create vitamin D. If someone's really low in vitamin D, I know that they're not seeing enough sunlight. Taking vitamin D as a supplement is not the same as making it yourself. Like when we make vitamin D ourselves, a whole lot of other things happen in our body that a vitamin D supplement just cannot replicate. They've also done lots of scientific studies that have shown the sickest people are vitamin D deficient, but taking supplements of vitamin D doesn't necessarily fix the issues. And so that's an important thing to recognize. It's all the other things that are going on with um, light exposure in the natural spectrum that are helping us, not just the isolated molecule that you can get as a supplement. UVA is also really important. Um, we get some UVA that starts coming out in the morning when the sun's about 10 degrees above the horizon. So it starts building over the course of the day so that it's highest at solar noon, both the UVs. But UVA in the morning helps to change hormonal and neurotransmitter signaling in our system. So it's a really important light for us to see. Now, I know that a lot of people, when they go outside, they put on sunglasses. That's going to block the UV coming through your eyes, which means that you won't be able to receive the beneficial wavelengths of UV to come into your system to start changing your signaling. Also, if you have your skin entirely covered, covered up in the morning, that's again another way that we have you know, as humans, <laughs> blocked natural light from being able to really help our body. So again, these are just like simple strategies that I start introducing with my clients or when I'm teaching my students in my classes, just to help them unpack and unravel just some simple ways that we can interact with the sun, you know, in more helpful times. Even if you eat your breakfast outside, if you have your car windows, you know, undone while you're driving to work or, you know, whatever you might be doing, dropping the kids off at school, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you can get natural light in, you're going to be much better served. I also just want to remind you that say right now I'm in my office and I've got all of these, you know, windows next to me, the windows let in the visible light spectrum. They don't let in UV and they don't let in the other end of the spectrum that I haven't spoken about yet infrared now infrared is over half the spectrum of light that's present from dawn to dusk every day and again you can't see it but the fact that it's half and this is red to infrared and long infrared waves means that it's pretty important <laughs> like otherwise we wouldn't have evolved to adapt to it our body needs infrared light now most people get visible light because they're inside windows all day so we know that visible light's emitted through there most people don't get any infrared and they're not getting the right kind of amounts or at the right times of UV exposure. Now that's really limiting what their body can do and what their energy can do. The other thing is if we've got devices or artificial lights on overhead, we've got a lot of blue spectrum light coming in and it's not balanced with the red that would normally be available over the course of the day. So in the morning, basically as the sun's rising, we get a little bit of blue that comes out. That's to signal for our cortisol awakening response to start happening, to start getting getting us moving. Then the UV comes out a little bit. That gets all of our hormones and our neurotransmitters going so that we feel better. We want to be engaged. We want to get stuff done. And then at the height of solar noon, that's when the most UV is around and that's when the most blue light is around. Our skin and our eyes are receiving that intensity and brightness of blue light and being like, okay, I know exactly what time it is. I know exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And I know exactly how to start setting my body up for the afternoon and the night time. You're also getting a lot of balance, even in the height of solar noon with infrared. There's this 50% chunk of infrared coming in, which is really anti-inflammatory. It's really good for the structured water components. It helps your mitochondria. So as we're outside, we're replenishing our system, even though these wavelengths, the blue is very high energy. So the sun is providing a lot of resources for our body to optimize what it's doing at all different times so that you can be running on time no matter what you're doing. So what I really, I just want to summarize this slide again. The natural light of sunlight is always about 50% red and infrared light from dawn to dusk. All the rest of the spectrums of light change over the course of the day. Every single wavelength of light is like another range of information for our body to tell it what to do and what happens next and which enzymes need to be produced and do I need to detoxify more now or whatever is happening. And so as many times as you can during the day, even if you've got a device-heavy life, 
if you can just go outside, let your skin and your eyes, your bare eyes, no contacts, no glasses, no sunglasses, see the sun, even if it's just for a minute, two minutes, if longer, great. But just that little natural, like, this is the time, this is the time it is. Then you can go back into your you know, house, home, dwelling, office, space, etc., which will generally have a lot of windows that only let in <laughs> visible light, surrounded by devices that only let out blue light. And at least your body's had a little bit of a break and it understands where it is in time and space compared to the sun, compared to the natural cues of life. And so there are other cues that help set up the timing in our body. The sun is the most important cue, but other cues include the earth's EMF frequency, which is why touching the earth, being on the earth as much as possible is really helpful. Temperature can change it. So say if it's actually winter outside, but you keep your um, house at, you know, 25 degrees all the time, that can really shift the clocks in your body. We are actually meant to experience the seasons that we live in of the geographic region that we're in. And the more we control that and, and disable our body from feeling it, the more discombobulated our body can be. I just also want to point that out. Um, social activities change it and just think about how often we say yes where we mean no to go out at night time or to have that extra dinner or to you know stay up later watch that Netflix movie you know whatever it might be that's involved with artificial light exposure artificial light exposure is involved with that high energy blue light exposure but it's missing all the other wavelengths of natural light that would normally support our body so it's just this other cue to be like activate 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 without any of the other helpful things that would help our body replenish. Physical activity, again, I used to be one of those people, I used to go to a 24-hour gym. I used to go and do gym workouts at one o'clock in the morning. Really the wrong kind of signal for a body to ever be able to rest. So looking at different times that you're activating movement and physical activity is really important. The timing of food intake is really important. And Think about also the geographic region that you live in and what kind of food that you're bringing in. If you're eating foods that don't come from anywhere near your area, like if you're you know, in Melbourne in wintertime and you're eating pineapples that come from Queensland, that's a light code coming into your body that can also be a little bit confusing for our body. Because in Melbourne, we can't grow pineapples in winter, yeah? We can hardly even grow them in summer. And so if you're eating food that's coming from another region that has a lot of different light codes to what you're currently living in, it's just another way we can create confusion. Does that make sense for you? I hope so. Some of these conversations, I just, <laughs> there's so much more I want to say. But the different wavelengths of light, what I'd love to land from this slide is that if you have an issue with blood sugar regulation, if you've got an issue with sleep, if you've got an issue with inflammation or your sex hormones or what's happening in your bones, your stress levels, your thyroid, your appetite, all of these things will be aligned to the light cues and then some of these other cues that then come in and lay a cake it. So there's a few different ways in which you can work to readdress your body to get your inner clocks running on time. It's not just the light. There are some other things as well, but the light for me is like the most important one to start with. And so all of these different hormones impact like our nuclear DNA, our mitochondrial DNA. DNA obviously gives us access to the blueprint of our body. That blueprint can either be not helpful or very helpful. <laughs> and so what happens with our fat and our water and our proteins and our microbiome, our minerals and our vitamins, how our body utilizes the food that we eat will come down to circadian rhythms and how those clock systems are running. And so what happens when we're getting too much light, which most of us are, yeah, we're not really aligned to the natural cycles of light and dark. Basically, sort of like what that slide just did then, our cells are like, whoa, I've got so much energy information coming in all the time. I don't know what to do. But that light energy information is more specifically in our human world, blue light. That's a very high energy light. High energy requires high resources to match it, yeah? Like if I asked you to, to do jumping jacks all day, like that's a pretty high energy exercise. You might be able to do it for a while, but you're going to run out of fuel, yeah? And so you don't really recognize it when you're under blue light exposure, but your body's burning through your nutrients, your resources, your fuel, your energy. 
So you can imagine that day after day after day, your body gets a bit more defensive, gets a bit more protective, gets a bit more stressed. And this is when we're hypervigilant and this is when we're just not the nicest versions of ourselves. We're a little grumpy, we're a little fatigued, we just feel off balance, we feel out of time, yeah? Yeah. And so what are the things that emit light? Like in your own life right now, just have a little quick think about it. Like what are the things that you know of? Like how do you normally start your day? When you first wake up in the morning, how does the light situation, do you turn on a light? Do you turn on a phone? You're going into the bathroom, turning on a light. You open the fridge, you turn on a light. There's all of these different cues of light. Maybe you're driving in the car. There's all of these super high LED blue beams coming at you while you're driving You know, you're going into a shopping center or a workspace environment. You've got overhead lights, yeah, everywhere. I also just want you to think about the angle of the light when it's considered, like, say if you think about the natural light, from dawn till dusk, the sun rises, changes position, goes into solar noon, and then it sets at nighttime, yeah. But where, what is the position of most of the overhead artificial lights in our life? Directly overhead, yeah, like solar noon with this blue light coming out, this high energy blue light. So basically wherever we go under those kind of conditions, our body's getting a signaling saying, hey, it's midday, it's midday, it's midday. And if it's midday, you're gonna, your body's going to be doing different things than it would be doing at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m., yeah? And so this is why there's a lot of chaos in most people's systems. And so here's a little side with things that emit light. Most people are so device heavy and most people are living in environments where there's street lights and car lights and neighborhood lights and porch lights and think about all of the lights. And so again, in as many ways as possible, how could you change those light exposures? One of the ways that I change my light exposures is using these blue blocking glasses. You might notice that they're actually yellow, that the lenses are actually yellow Clear blue blocking glasses, they they just don't do enough if you're a device heavy person. At nighttime, if I was to watch TV after the sun went down, like if I did want to, you know, watch Netflix, I put on glasses that are red that block out basically all blue light. Sure, it does change the visuals of the screen, but sure, my energy is so much more worth it to me. So is my sleep because I know how much repair happens at sleep time. So again, there's just two different ways that you can you know, start to slowly shift your interactions with light is just wearing blue blocking glasses. I like blue block, blockbluelight.com.au, Viva Rays and Bond Charge. I think those three companies are great. There's a few others, but those three, I really believe in their technology. Some of the cheaper brands or the um, <laughs> less well verified brands, I don't actually believe the blue blocking glasses are doing what they say. And there's been a, enough scientific journal journal articles written on that for me to believe that. The other thing that I want to bring to your awareness is pitch black. (laughs) So one of the things that changes the way that we can rest at night, even if there's one photon of light, like any little stream of light coming into our bedroom will change our body's ability to rest and sleep. So you might not be able to totally black out your bedroom, but as close to as possible, that's going to really help your body And as I said already, like after the sun goes down, if you can have red lighting or red blue blocking glasses on, um, that's going to be really helpful. And certainly turning off overhead light so that there's no signal saying it's midday. (laughs) And if you've got your screen in front of you, that blue light and the, the distance from your face is another signal saying it's very bright. It's very midday now. So that's why if you can challenge the way that you do your nighttime routine and just change the way that you interact with light, And if you were to rest in a room that was very black, your ability to really set up your circadian rhythms and your clock rhythms and your DNA repair programs would be so amazing. And imagine if you had more repair happening in your body, what could happen in your life? Like if you had more repair happening at nighttime and you had more energy during the day and you were your best version of yourself and that just kept flowing on each and every day, who would you be then? And so some key suggestions that I have, sunrise, particularly more than sunset, helps set up our daily rhythms. But seeing sunrise and sunset 
they're quite strong transition times, yeah, like the light at sunrise and the light at sunset. Most people find it really magical and I believe that we we find it magical for a reason because our body is meant to experience it. Like we're meant to be standing there appreciating and like having so much gratitude. And I know that appreciation and gratitude change mitochondrial function. They change the water in our body. They change cell communication, like all of these different things happening when we're activating gratitude and appreciation. And I find that sunrise and sunset, they're generally pretty easy to access because it's beautiful. Like there's changes in light, there's changes in sound, there's changes in smells, even if you live in a city, even if you don't have a direct view of sunrise or sunset, just start your day off facing east. You can be, you know, on a balcony in the shade. It could be raining, cloudy, you know, doesn't matter what happening weather-wise, just face east and be outside and you will be receiving those cues of light. And I just invite people just to listen to the sounds of the birds, even in the middle of the city. There's always birds, there's always trees, there's always some nature happening. Um, sunset's also another really important time. And as I mentioned, when the sun goes down, that's when I turn my lights down. I'm really aware of the angle of the lights and I'm really aware of the color of the lights. I really want to do as much as possible at nighttime. I'm, you know, again, not going to speak into it today, but artificial light at night is absolutely associated with increased risk of breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colon cancer, as well as many other types of cancers. How many women do you know with breast cancer who, or who have had breast cancer? Artificial light at night is absolutely related to that. Um, this UVA rise that I was talking about before. So as the sun's coming up, when the sun's about 10 degrees above the horizon to when it's about 30 degrees above the horizon, from my practitioner point of view, that's the most important time to be outside. I'll take as much as I can get, whether it's one minute, 20 minutes, an hour, like please get out at that time. That's what's going to really day after day, if you were to access that particular time, you would notice a really big difference in not too, too long a time, depending on what's going on, obviously, in your history and your current status of health. Um, there is an app called Circadian that helps you know when UVA rise is happening. Also, wherever you are in Australia um, or around the world, where, wherever you listen to this, there's another app called DMinder that also lets you know about UV exposure and the best exposure for your body to increase how much vitamin D you can get. And as I said, like your natural vitamin D is way more powerful than any vitamin D supplementation. Um, so blocking um, the third point on this side around the key suggestions for you to implement is just to block or mitigate artificial light, especially at night. And the other thing I haven't spoken that much about today is eating with natural light. If you eat under uh, the exposure of artificial blue light, you will decrease your body's ability to be able to regulate sugar and handle sugar. Like glucose handling changes, insulin levels rise. Even if you're not eating food and you've got blue light exposure, you will have more insulin in your system. And again, think about how many people are pre-diabetic, struggling with weight or are diabetic. Blue light exposure is really involved with that. So if you're interested in your weight and muscle ratio, if you're interested in having better appetite regulation, eating under natural light will always be a better option than eating under artificial light. If you are stuck inside, if you could turn the lights off, that's better than nothing and no devices. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, there's other things as well, you know, like fasting, cold therapy, exercise therapies. Um, you know, <laughs> I've got a lot of different suggestions. But at, at the most basic, basically, if you heard anything, it's just get outside in the morning for as long as possible. If you can block artificial light at night, that's amazing. If you can block artificial light while you're eating, that's even better. So they're pretty simple strategies, but my God, are they effective? Well, my gosh, sorry, if someone doesn't align with that word, I kind of use it as a source-based word. So I want to sum up light, all light, whether it's man-made or natural, is energy and information for your body. Your body is responding to that cue. The more artificial light exposure you are under, the more stress and chaos your body is under, the more inflammation you will have. The greater the level of inflammation in a person, the greater I know as a practitioner, their, their circadian disruption is higher. And so addressing that disruption means addressing circadian rhythms from there, then we can address other things like food and movement and supplements, nutrient excesses and deficiencies. But if you don't get the light cues right, it's really hard for cells to know what to do and when to do. I hope that that makes sense.
So most people around the entire world are red and infrared light deficient because we've got so much visible light exposure, so much blue light exposure. Um, and even if you think about sunblocks, sunblocks block UV light and they let in visible light. So we've still got lots of blue light coming into our skin. Blue light can be really damaging for our skin when we've got a lot of it. And when we're under devices, we've got a lot of blue light still coming into our skin. So we're missing out on all the helpful rays of UV coming through our skin. We're missing out on UVB, being able to make vitamin D when we've got sunblock on. We often stay out in the sun longer, so we've got even more blue light exposure. Um, and I'm not vilifying blue light. We need blue light. I just want to also say that blue light is a natural part of the light spectrum. I love it. It's just that we've got so much man-made blue light coming in now um, and not enough red and infrared. So you can buy red and infrared light devices. I mean, I, I sell them. Like I, I've been using red and infrared light for, gosh, nearly 20 years as a skin therapist, as a body worker, as an energy worker, as a naturopath. Like it's a very powerful part of my treatment strategy. You can get, um, you know, little globes you can use in your house, incandescent lights. Like there's lots of different ways you can introduce more red and infrared light. But just remember as my last kind of point, the more unprotected device exposure you have, the more issues you'll have through your eyes, your brain, your body from skin to within. So device exposure and a lack of natural light is a recipe for dis-ease, basically. And so as I've come to completion around about now, of course, I'm going to invite in any questions if anybody has any but maybe just have a think about what you have learned today, like what you want to take away from today. And what's one change that you know that you could potentially easily implement? And just imagining one small step, maybe it's just opening your back door while you have breakfast or opening a window while you're inside or opening your car window while you're driving. Maybe it is eating a breakfast outside or even taking your kids to eat with you and have breakfast outside or your partner or your pets. Maybe it's something else. And if you want to go further, obviously I do look after clients one-on-one, -on -one, but I also have a three-class series that provides even more potent information. If you really liked understanding a little bit more about how your body works and why, you can totally go deeper. And I feel like from my point of view, again, that's when we are most empowered, when we really understand more about how how and why our body functions the way that it does so that we can take more ownership of our life choices. So I've got three classes sitting there. There's a discount code that um, you guys can use. Yeah, the girls 40. So YTG 40 um, for this three class series. If you want to go deeper, I absolutely invite you to because I feel like it's so potent and so powerful. Um, light is literally the foundation from which I I change my clients' lives over and over and over again now. And I've looked after people from all around the world with, you know, significant brain injuries to, you know, chronic skin issues to immune dysfunction, you know, you name it. I've, I've looked after people and this is the first thing that I address with each of my clients. And I'm sharing with you a lot of the knowledge that I've gained over a long time with a lot of countless hours of study. So hopefully it made sense. Hopefully it was meaningful for you. That's my intention um, you know, and I invite you to share this information with other people because the more people that understand more about light, the healthier and better and more integrated I believe our world can be. And so there we go. We are coming to completion of this class. Um, and yeah, of this particular share, it's definitely been my honor to um, you know, share with you the things that I literally am most passionate about. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you want to do the classes, I think I talk for another five and a half hours in those classes. Like there's a lot more to uncover. Um, but if you do have any questions, if you could just ask me now, otherwise I will just like to come in just to a couple of breaths, just to honor this connection today. Any questions? No, beautiful. So I really just want to offer you a deep thank you. And maybe if you feel like offering yourself a deep thank you, like to your skin, your eyes, your brain, your body, I want to just hold my heart as I say that. It might feel really nice just to hold your own heart, hold your own body and say, yes, I am here with you. I'm here for you. 
and just taking a breath in and doubling the length of your exhale as you release and let go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The divine light in me sees, honors, and knows the divine light in you. Thank you so much. That was such a healing journey. <laughs> right. Perfect. That was <laughs> it was amazing. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to actually ask us here. I've been monitoring the chat. It looks good at the moment. There's a lot of uh, tension there. So that's actually really good. Some people said that, yep, they're going down to the beach now. That's actually really, really good. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Well, well no other questions um i just invite anyone to comment on this afterwards obviously i'm really happy to i love questions there's no mm. there's no question that's a dumb question i will i love sharing and i love um helping expand people's awareness and understanding so whatever arrives later i'm definitely happy for as well wonderful thank you so much again for your time today and thank you to our audience for joining us again on knowledge is power first day we look forward to seeing you next week